Hi, everyone. My name is Eden Full. I'm originally from Calgary, Canada, uh, but I currently study mechanical engineering at a university in the United States. I'm here to talk to you today about a technology that I developed called the Sun Saluter, and I want to tell you a little bit about the story of how I got started in uh, developing this device. So first, I want to let you know about something related to solar panels. If you just place a solar panel um, flat on the ground or flat on the roof, and you let the sun, you know, you're not doing anything to the solar panel, and you are just letting the sun rotate throughout the day, you are actually losing 40% of the potential energy you could be collecting from that solar panel. What you need to do is find a way to rotate the solar panel so that it follows the sun too. And if you do that, you are actually getting the most efficiency out of the solar panel. And so what I developed is the world's first solar tracker to be used in developing countries so that people in underdeveloped rural areas will also be able to get this 40% more electricity. And I did it using a water clock design so that it can also provide clean water for these villagers as well. I'm going to go into specifics about the design in a little bit. But first, I want to tell you my story. So this was me, um, you know, 11 years ago, um, I was really interested in solar panels. I had this device. Um, it was a solar car, and I would charge it so that it would go from one end of my house to the other. And I had this observation that, you know, this is interesting. I am not getting enough electricity from this panel, even though it tells me on the panel that I should be getting, you know, two watts. I'm actually not getting that much electricity. So. I started you know, thinking to myself, what are some ways that I can make solar panels rotate? And you know, I realized as I started searching on the internet that this was actually a bigger problem than I originally thought. So I went to Home Depot, and um, by the time um, I got a little bit older, I had the knowledge to be able to put together my first prototype for a solar panel tracker. And now we are talking on a larger scale with larger solar panels. Uh, my first design used two types of metal that would be welded together. And when they were welded together, as they heated up during the day because of the sun, they would bend, and that would cause the solar panel to displace and rotate to the other side. I'll, I'll soon go into detail about why this design didn't work. But this was my very first prototype, and I was able to build it in my basement when I was 16, 17 years old. And so, you know, something that had started at this, as this childhood interest was slowly becoming something that I was considering as a career option. And so the reason that I decided to build my own tracker was because I searched on Google, and this was what I found. It's, it's so complicated. I, as a 16-year-old, I didn't really know where to begin, and I didn't know how to understand this. So I wanted to design something that was more relevant for me and was something that I could understand. When I got into university and I decided to study engineering, I had a chance to deploy the very first sun saluter in Kenya. Uh, Kenya is right on the equator, which means that it gets a lot of sunlight, it's very direct, and you get a lot of very good data. So I was able to get a better understanding of how solar panels performed in this part of the world. Um, what was interesting, though, was people were excited that I was here. I went into this village called Mpala, and I talked to you know, different families, I talked to uh, different villagers, and asked them and tried to understand a little bit more about how they use electricity. Why, is solar panel, why are solar panels important to them? And what they ended up telling me was, it's very nice and very kind of you to come and help us, but we don't understand your design. It's too complicated. The metals that you are using, if they were to break, we wouldn't know how to fix them. We wouldn't know how to fix them. And it would be very difficult to find these parts um, you know, in, in, a, in a hardware shop in Kenya. And so that got me thinking, um, maybe there are better ways that I can design the sun saluter. And there are um, you know, more interesting ways that I can use local materials to design something that works for them. 
And so then I started to think, if there's this interesting project that I can be working on right now, why am I in school? Why am I you know, just sitting in class instead of actually going out and helping people with this design? So I decided to, that I would take two years off from school, and I accepted a fellowship so that I could move to San Francisco, meet with other engineers, other designers, and learn how to design a better product and work on the Sun Saluter full time. And so I observed something while I was in Kenya. There are these um, jerry cans that they will fill with water. They'll wake up at you know, 5, 6 in the morning, and they'll fill these jerry cans of water, and then they will bring them back to their village, and they will just put these jerry cans on the ground in the house. They, they're not doing anything. And I saw this while I was there, and I thought, hmm, that's actually a, a waste of uh, uh, just wasted potential sitting on the ground right there. What if there is a way that I can use this water to rotate the solar panels so that's using something that they already have instead of the complicated metal design that I had before? And so, as some of you might know, uh, the, some of the same areas that lack access to solar panels, that lack access to electricity, also have a problem um, getting access to clean water as well. Part of this problem comes from a lack of understanding that clean water is important. Because it's hard if, for example, I stopped drinking dirty water today, it would be hard for me to see a health benefit tomorrow. It might, my health might improve a month from now, a year from now, but it's hard to see that short-term short change. And so at present, the market for deploying sun saluters is actually quite large. There are 3 million solar panels deployed in the developing world right now. And that number is continuing to grow. So as more people start to use solar panels, I want there to be sun saluters so that they can be getting as much efficiency as possible. And at the same time, because there are all of these people who are dying from these um, waterborne diseases, and they're not understanding why, I started to think to myself, what if there's a way that I can almost unintentionally incentivize them to use clean water and get clean water every day by giving them the incentive of having additional electricity? 40% more electricity means you can charge your cell phone, your solar lantern, your radio 40% more quickly. So instead of having to wait you know, six hours, now you can wait four hours. And this kind of efficiency and this kind of um, you know, reduced time is very important to these villagers. And so I thought, if there's a way that I can combine all of these aspects in one design, then maybe this is something they will actually want to use instead of the design that I had before. So the Sun Saluter works by using pop bottles that will store the water. Uh, I realized that I wanted to use pop bottles because these can be found anywhere in the world. So you fill these pop bottles at the beginning of the day with the water that you've collected. You attach the water to one side of the solar panel, using, uh, and then you have on the other side a counterweight. So now the solar panel is on a swing, right? One side will be heavier, so that at, on the east side, the, the, the water clock will be mounted on that side. And then you are able to calibrate the water flow so that it will drip out at a very steady rate. And what you're doing is you're adjusting that using the simple um, mechanism that I've developed. And that basically means you're changing the height of the system. So when you change the height of the system, the amount of water that comes out will also change. And by using um, a, a machined metal block, I can control that flow rate so it will be the same throughout the entire day. And at the same time, what you want to do is, over one or two days, calibrate this flow so that it matches the rate at the sun moving across the sky. And so the water will flow into a receiving container. And then at the same time, if the villager can afford it, they can um, hook it up to a water filter. And so now, almost unintentionally, because the water is just flowing out, it will also flow into the filter, and you'll have clean water as a result. And so as the water flows out of the pop bottles, the side will get lighter. And as it gets lighter, this swing will move to the other side very gradually. And so as the sun saluter swings over, then it will follow the sun. 
and you almost are getting the same performance that you would get as one of those complicated electrical trackers that I showed you at the very beginning. And all you're doing is just this simple water clock design. And so at the end of the day, you now have 40% more electricity and four liters of clean water that can be used. And so we had a chance to pilot this new technology. Since I took time off, I could now have the freedom to travel and you know, go to these countries, talk to villagers. I could spend months there at a time. And we had a chance to get feedback on this new technology. And the reception was very different than the first, uh, the, the first, uh, the first time we deployed this technology. Uh, this time, people looked at it, and they were like, oh, I understand that you just have water on this side and you have the solar panel moving. Nobody questioned, you know, where do I find this material? I don't understand this technology. How am I going to repair this? A lot of the questions that we got were, you know, more straightforward, and it seemed like this was a more realistic solution for these villagers. And so, you know, as I continued to develop the Sun Saluter and flesh out the design, we had a chance to work with real organizations, real nonprofits, and as soon enough, we became an organization ourselves. Uh, one of the nice things was working in a maternity clinic in Uganda, and so now these women would have a chance to own this uh, community charging station so they can charge their cell phones while they work and while the midwives are helping birth babies. Uh, at the end of the day, they can come home and their phones are charged. They can start cooking at night because they have a lantern. And you know, all of a sudden, their lives are better because they have more electricity. And part of that comes from having a sun saluter. And so, Comparing this to an existing solar panel tracker, there's not even a comparison. The Sun Saluter is the world's first solar tracker for the developing world. And I feel confident in this design because we've taken it out into the field. We've proven that it can be made from you know, a simple pop bottle, a little bit of aluminum, some recycled metal, or wood. These are all things that can be found locally. So the Sun Saluter is substantially more affordable for someone in the developing world. And the Sun Saluter will continue to be cost effective as long as it costs less to buy a Sun Saluter than it does to purchase another 40% of a solar panel. And at, this, um, at the present situation, uh, solar panels actually cost you know, two to three dollars per watt because it's so expensive in the developing world and distribution chains are still very limited. So purchasing a Sun Saluter and you know, taking ownership of that is more realistic for these villagers. So my goals for this upcoming year are to roll out 200 units. We've currently rolled out approximately 50 so far. Uh, we really want to target at least 15,000 villagers with this technology. We want to understand um, you know, how can we continue to empower locals with this technology? How can uh, we make this something that they want to use? And we want to build out the team locally. We're going to be focusing in on India because we've uh, gotten the most reception in that area. A lot of the organizations are interested in working with us. Uh, there's a very strong market in India. And what we want to do is eventually be able to uh, allow local Indians to be able to start up Sun Saluter enterprises and be able to sell them to their um, local areas. So the Sun Saluter, um, this current governing organization, is actually going to be a nonprofit. And so I want to finish telling you, uh, finish by telling you a story of why I, I was compelled to act now. Why was I compelled to stop out of school and work on this now instead of waiting? So I was in that village, that first village in Mpala, Kenya, and um, you know I talked to different members of the village, and I talked to one mother, and she told me how she had three solar lanterns. One of them she would give to her children. One of them she would give to her husband so he could um, you know, do his work. And uh, one of them she would keep for herself. The solar panel that came with this kit um, could only power two, two and a half lanterns if she was lucky on a good day. And she was complaining to me that the third lantern would never fully charge. So it was like she didn't really have that lantern at all. And I thought, oh, well, this is a very simple problem to solve. Let me go build you a sun saluter and I will come back. So 
I came back into this village and I tried to find this woman again. Um, but what I realized was I couldn't find her anymore. I asked around and eventually someone told me, her neighbor, I think, um, you know, this woman, she wandered into the dark and uh, she eventually um, got trampled by a buffalo. She couldn't see, it was too dark. And um, you know, I don't know if she even took the lantern in the first place or she knew it was going to die so she didn't even bother to take the lantern out into the field. But this was a moment that really hit home for me was that me sitting in a classroom instead of working on this project, you know, I could have saved so many other lives. What am I doing with my life? Um, and so I realized that now is the time. Now is the time that I have a passion for a project. I care about this cause, and I know that my solution has the potential to help people so that no one will ever get trampled by a buffalo ever again. And so that's why I decided to take the time off. And now we've gotten the Sun Saluter to a point where uh, we have a, a team running it, and uh, I've actually returned to school to continue my studies in mechanical engineering so I can continue to make the sun saluter better, and I can also continue to invent other things that might be helpful. So um, thank you very much um, for letting me share my passion with you today. <laughs>